So I'm gonna, uh, as I said before, I'm gonna start playing the album and as we go along with it, I'm gonna comment a little bit on tracks, uh, personal impressions, maybe a few facts. And as I said, the purpose of this uh, Beatles um, uh, albums that I'm doing is basically strip down the songs to the um, core. Uh, and to the most essential elements and do just like harmony and melody. Just one guitar, one vocal. Trying to keep it as simple as possible. So in a way you can see, you know, my approach to those songs, maybe that's useful to you in the sense that if you want to play them with, you know, just uh, by yourself with an acoustic guitar and a vocal, this is my my way of approaching to, to these songs that I learned at a very early age and that kind of defined the way I was going to do music for the... Uh, uh, the upcoming years of, uh, of me as a musician. Um, basically, I found everything that I needed to learn of pop music as we know it today through the Beatles. I don't think there's anyone out there after the Beatles that... Uh, Michael Jackson this is the only, the only one that revolution pop music as we know it today with more of a rhythmic and vocal kind of stuff without much harmony. The Beatles were the kings of harmony, um, of building harmonic structures in their songs. Um, with their vocals and with other instruments as well. But here we're gonna reduce the harmony as simple as it can be with, with an acoustic guitar and a vocal. So, um, and you can still hear the song. That's that's the the magic of of the Beatles that uh, the all the embellishments that they did with their arrangements like it's not the same Eleanor Rigby without the string quartet and the um, and the you know and and all the arrangements beautiful arrangements George Martin did in that song but it's still a really a single scan week the it is you can still play it. And you can still hear the song, you know, with just a few elements, a few chords. So that's the purpose of, of this transmissions, basically. And uh, also have, uh, I always wanted to have recorded uh, my, um, uh, I'm going to say my, uh, journey through the, the Beatles uh, songs and stuff. Just wanted to print them somehow. I think this is a great opportunity since I have a lot of time home, uh, same as a lot of people do. Anyways, I'm gonna start with um, Sergeant Peppers, and I'm gonna, as I said, comment the album as as we go through. Uh, impressions and songs and stuff like that. Uh, so the album opens up with two songs that are very um, that, that they're put together, uh, kind of sort of a medley, and that's the f I think that's the first album to open up with a with a medley with two songs that, that were like glued together. Uh, <clears throat> so it starts like this. One, two.
Sergeant Pappas, they commit suicide in the middle of the song, of course. All right, that's the uh, opening for Sergeant Pappas. Um, with two clearly, clear McCartney songs. I think Paul, as we saw earlier in the other uh, Beatles albums, uh, in the Beatlemania. The Beatlemania era, I think John was more of the um, the leader of the band. It was still his band, you know, like the Quarrymen. And it's like, okay, I let Paul lead in, in the band. I, you know, uh, it was his decision. It was his band. He was the older one. And when, when you're like 17 and 15, even is like a couple of years, difference is, seems like a big difference. Um, from 15 to 17, there's, there's a lot of... Different. 14, George was 14 when he joined the band. I was like, look at. Uh, so it's still John's band uh, for quite a while. And I think here Paul starts to take a little bit <clears throat> of the. that. I mean, when well, the Beatles stopped touring in 66, and they started realizing that they couldn't make songs like Eleanor Rigby or I'm Only Sleeping, they, they were like doing Revolver and they were like touring, like playing, like She's a Woman. Which I mean, it's 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 fine, but they weren't in that, <clears throat> uh, you know, they, they they weren't like like that anymore. You know, they they, they were like, um, in in a different uh, situation, in, in in a different tune. So it didn't make sense to them to still play those like. Uh, Beatlemania songs while well, they were making songs like Eleanor Rigby or For No One. And um, I think clearly now Paul was the one that started taking over the band, uh, like being the leader. Came up with the concept of Sgt. Peppers, of being this other band that they're not the Beatles and, you know, they're the Sgt. Peppers only high school band. Probably a lot of people consider this the first concept album. Uh, there's a difference between a concept album and a conceptual album. 
Uh, a conceptual album is, a th- I think, there's an album that has a theme, like The Wall or like The Lamb Lies on Broadway. Like it has a story, and each song has a character and a story. It's like more like an opera rock. And a concept album is an album that has a concept that it's it, it glues the album together, but it doesn't necessarily follow like a story. So I think Sgt. Pepper's is a concept album instead of a conceptual album. Um, that it has this thing about being someone else and, you know, it opens up uh, the act like we're the Sgt. Pepper's only house club band, we're not the Beatles, we're someone else. And at the end, it seems like the whole um, album is done by this band. And then at the very end, the, you know, it, it says... Where the Sgt. Pepper's only house club band. We're sorry, but it's time to go. Goodbye. And then they have A Day in the Life, which is like a bonus track, like an encore or something like that. And then the record ends. So um, I think, you know, clearly Paul was thinking here. And, and, and in the same year, he did Magical, they did Magical Mystery Tour, which is also a, a, a Paul idea. This is very clearly a, a, a Paul concept. So for a lot of people that think that John was the main uh, guy that, you know, the, the, the artist, conceptual artist, like outside the box thinking, I think Paul had a, a lot of that too. You don't give him enough credit just because he did songs like Gold Bladio Blada and, and Maxwell Silverhammer and stuff like that. He still, uh, he was still was like a concept art artist in a way. Uh, <laughs> came up with these concepts that John didn't do that, you know? Um, so it was clearly Paul uh, trying to take over the band. Uh, you see now in the A side of Sgt. Peppers, there's a lot of uh, McCartney songs, a lot of songs a lot of other Beatles don't even play. Sgt. Pepper's on the guitars is Paul. I don't think George plays it or John play anything there. They do the back the backing vocals. I don't think they play at all. And uh, in um, well, like uh, she's leaving home, I was it's just Paul with the orchestra again. Like did that in Help. He did that in Revolver. He did that in Sgt. Pepper's. Anyways, uh, this is John's first song of the album. A very famous and very controversial song about LSD and all that. Probably know the story told a million times about the LSD and Julian and the drawing and losing the sky with diamonds. Picture yourself in a boat on a river. With tangerine trees and marmalade skies Somebody calls you, you answer quite slowly A girl with kaleidoscope eyes Cellophane flowers of yellow
All right. LSD, LSD, LSD. Honestly, my personal opinion, I don't enjoy losing the Sky with Diamonds as much as other songs. I think John's contribution in this album is definitely the the best song of the album, I think, and one of my favorite songs of all times of the history of recorded music is A Day in the Life. Uh, I think that that contribution is, and with the Paul Middle Eight, it's freaking amazing. One of the best things I've ever heard in my life. Um, but I think John's contribution to this album was very lazy in a way. I mean, I think in, in the I think John and the White Album is much better, and uh, that's why the White Album is my favorite album. We'll talk about that one when it comes to it. Um, for now, we're in 1967, uh, and um, we were touching peppers. And the same year, they did Magical Mystery Tour, which is it was amazing. Which included Story Fields and Penny Lane um, that were released as a single. So, Story Fields and Penny Lane were before Sgt. Peppers. It was the pre Sgt. Peppers, and they were going to make this whole album about their growing up in, in Liverpool and um, these places and situations that they've been. Um, uh, as as kids in Liverpool, uh, but that didn't happen. That didn't go through. So another Paul's input in this album. Now we're gonna see that the the, the whole A side is mainly Paul's. Uh, Sergeant Peppers with a little help from my friends. Uh, that's Paul. Both of them. Uh, even though Ringo sings it, obviously, but it's obviously a Paul song. Uh, getting better, fixing a hole. She's leaving home. Oh. Very Polish. So we're we'll getting better.
great, great song. One of the great uh, Paul McCartney songs that is a little bit overlooked, I think. Uh, but it has such a great, it's su such a Beatles song. It could be one of the songs that defines what the Beatles are all about. Um, amazing. Uh, uh, I think it's a little bit perfected, uh, like like. You can you can put them together. Uh, I was alone and took a ride and I know that I was fine. I got to do I want It has like the same jing 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 kind of feel in a in a in a G high note. Like um I think that was we said before with uh, "Got to Get You Into My Life," like a little bit, little Richard-ish influence there, Paul, with a with a G uh, happy high thing, which is great. All right, uh, let's keep going with the album. Enough talk. Let's play a little more. Uh, fixing a hole. Which is a beautiful, beautiful Paul McCartney song. Um, again, another one that is kind of overlooked, um, underrated. I don't know why. Uh, interesting fact about the song is that George Martin didn't do the string arrangement, which I always thought he did. It was some other guy that uh, Paul rang because um, John was um, George Martin wasn't available for some reason. I don't know. Or he told him, Paul said, "I have this song. Can you put a string arrangement to it?" And George Martin said, "Okay, give me a couple of weeks." And he said, "All right." And and Paul couldn't wait, so he called someone else 
to do this arrangement. I don't know. It's something that Paul would do. Sacrifice everything for the music. Debatable. Very debatable. Anyways. Wednesday morning at five o'clock as the day begins Silently closing the bedroom door Leaving the note that she hoped would say more She goes downstairs to the kitchen Clutching her handkerchief times because uh, doing both vocals of John and Paul is kind of hard especially oh, with that high thing so there were a couple of notes off there um, anyways beautiful very overlooked song by Paul McCartney he has so many so many songs is incredible. Very weird song by John Lennon, this one. Uh, one of my favorites of Sgt. Pepper's. I'm gonna modify the ending a little bit. I'm gonna um, adapt it a little bit. I'm not gonna go too crazy on it. This is one of the most like prog rock songs the Beatles have. Uh, along with the uh, Oh, uh, what's this thing? Um, with a day in the life, especially this album. So John was very like out, like Paul was still like, she's leaving home, getting better. 
like very um um I don't know how to put it, but like to very safe places he was going. John was like redoing everything, like very unpredictable. This song, it's kind of hard to tell where, where it goes, especially if you listen to it for the first time. Being for the benefit of Mr. Guide. For the benefit of Mr. Guide, there will be a show tonight. I'm trampling. What a scene of a man on horses who bring out the slices to a hog set of real fire. In this way, Mr. K will challenge the world. The celebrated Mr. K performed his feet on Saturday at Bishop's Gate. The Henderson's will dance and sing as Mr. K flies through the ring. Don't be late. Mr. Kite. Nothing to say about the song that hasn't been said already. Amazing song. Um, so this closes the A side. And this opens the B side of Search and Peppers. I never know that. Um, one of the longest songs in the album. And one of the um, probably hardest songs to play. Uh, adapting it to the acoustic guitar. I'm gonna try to do the best I can with this song. It's kind of weird. Another uh, George Indian uh, song. This time, um, I think I, I always wondered what happened to George in Sgt. Pepper's, he wasn't involved at all. Like, he didn't care one bit about his album. Which is so crazy, because in the previous album, Revolver, he has three great songs. Uh, so it's very crazy how in Sgt. Pepper's he just has this very long meditation Indian song, Indian style song, Doing the same thing as we did with uh, Love You Too, uh, dropping the, the whole guitar to a s open C chord. I'm gonna put, put a cape on the first and uh, doing C sharp because this song is in C sharp. I don't promise the best version of this song ever, but how many are there?
Something like that. Uh, again, I think George was in this time period very um, influenced by um, Indian music and the whole Indian culture and uh, with um, uh, Ravi Shankar and uh, all that. And he thought making, you know, like songs like this next song uh, was kind of silly, I guess. I don't know. The song is probably one of the best uh, known songs of uh, this album, Sgt. Peppers. Again, this is Paul playing it pretty safe. It was one of his first songs he ever written and uh, very jazz influenced. And uh, it goes like this. Counts, I think uh, George has one, and Jonathan has like three, four songs. So again, this is a, a very Paul-driven album, as we were talking before. Me to make nothing come between 
happy powerful um, not powerful but you know like happy um, good mood song uh, typical Paul <laughs> a very weird tempo this song I, again this is I think in this album Paul plays it real, really safe and John goes more experimental with like uh, time signatures and uh, like course like lives in the sky he goes from here to here which is a very unpredicted thing. Mr. Kite is full of like going around like different uh, parts. Here is like something with John was very, very experimental in this album. Um, and Paul was playing it really safe. And I think it's a great combination between those two worlds. Like this is when you can see them being like way apart. Like losing the sky or oh, good morning, good morning. They don't. Have, they, it doesn't have anything to do with lovely Rita, but I love how at the end of the album they come together to do a day in the life. That's phenomenal. One, two, three. Sloppy to play, actually, with the with the weird uh, metrics it it has. Anyways, uh, these are the two last song.
All right. The reprise. I always love the reprise. And the three vocal harmony is amazing. Outstanding. All right. The, this is the last song of Sgt. Pepper's. My favorite song of all times. Or one of them for sure. Um... I've been reviewing this album as, as I've been um, uh, playing along, uh, so I've got nothing much left to say about this album. Uh, I don't know why it's not, if I have to choose to rank Beatles albums, I would put the White Album, then probably Abbey Road, and then probably... Um, an album, uh, Revolver, which we did, and then maybe Sgt. Peppers. So, uh, I don't know why. Uh, I mean, I love the album, don't get me wrong, but I don't see the... Like, I think Revolver is much uh, uh, way... Uh, like, it, it, it's it's more... The, the change between... Rubber Soul and Revolver is way more drastic than between Revolver and Sgt. Peppers. That makes any sense. So Revolver in a way is like newer than Sgt. Peppers or, you know, more, more of a breakthrough album. Anyways, the last song.
Hello, Sergeant Peppers, Lonely House Club Band. Finally. All right. See you next time with Magical Mystery Tour.